I don't know who's at the lead of the marketing campaign for Merino wool, but for the past four to five years, all of the winter wears from base layers to outer layers every, or to socks, everybody just wants Merino wool. And I'm here today to tell you that I think the marketing campaign is far better than the actual product. This place is on the map, the adventure map. Welcome to the Marty Morissette audio experience. <laughs> Let's go. Ooh. Welcome back, Outdoor Nation. Hope everybody's having a wonderful week. Welcome to the studio. Finally set myself up down here. Uh, sometimes I like to take advantage of my long drive home and record a podcast in the car. Sometimes I'm sitting here in the studio and it allows me to, to kind of use a couple of things here. So Hey, today we're here. Tomorrow we might be in the car. As uh, some of you guys know, I'm you know I'm a huge fan of winter camping. Huge fan of winter camping. But winter camping has its uh, its reputation where, um, or I guess like one of the things that a lot of people always tell me when they see my winter camping videos or they see kind of what I do in the winter time is that how are you not cold or are you crazy sleeping at minus thirty outside uh, when it's minus thirty outside? And my answer is always the same. It's like if it was. If I, I would never do any of this if I would, if I would be cold, like obviously there are techniques and methods and applications and knowledge that you need to know that, that, that allows you to thrive through all of this. And one of the big thing to have, and, and that's one of the key components that I talked about on my talk at Fjall Raven is that one of the big, not one of the biggest thing that you can focus on when you're at winter camping backpacking, whatever, you know, or even winter daily activities, the number one, like the whole game, if you want to turn, if there's one thing that you should turn your attention to when you go out in the winter is moisture management. It's 100% what gets people, the people that can manage their moisture, like the moisture management of their body, I don't know how to say that, um, that can manage that properly. They love winter activities. The people that can't, they're the ones that are wet. They're the ones that are cold. They're the ones that don't understand. And they're the ones that usually aren't that attracted by, 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 by it. And the good news is that there's tons of gear that allows you to deal with that. There's tons of techniques that allows you to deal with that. And uh, one of the one of the section of, of, of that whole process on how to better manage moisture is obviously a proper base layer. And a base layer is, uh, you know, just your good old long johns and like, you know, long sleeves over top, uh, like um, two piece uh, kind of like, a, a, yeah, base layer, underwear, base layer, whatever it is. And um, it, a lot of people have a misunderstanding of what the base layer is for. And that is right off the bat kind of like throwing them off. The purpose of the base layer is not to keep you warm, although it does add warmth to the process. It is not its main purpose. Its main purpose is to wick the sweat off of your body so that your body stays dry, but the material absorbs the, the uh, wicks the sweat off of you. And that is a key, key, key component to that because, um, because it, it, you, you, you're keeping your body, like I said, it's all, it's all moisture management, but keeping your body dry and offloading the moisture into the next layer which is in this case your 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 base layer is the first layer it is the entire process it is the entire game of moisture management when you're going to go out in the winter it might be minus 30 if you're going to be hiking with a backpack on your back and that's going to be 50 pounds you're going to sweat like it is impressive how much you can sweat at minus 30 minus 35 minus 20 degrees celsius out there and that sweat is extremely dangerous because when you stop moving and now you're not warm and generating all that heat, that sweat freezes on you. And then that sweat is stuck into your insulation layers. And then that your insulation layers, your mid layers, maybe your puffy jacket freezes, your feet freezes because the moisture of the sweat uh, that went into your sock now traveled into your boot. And that also freezes your boot. So now the next day when you get up from your tent, you slept at minus 30, your boot is rock solid, hard and frozen because there was so much moisture in there. Moisture management is everything. It is 100% everything. Learning to turn your attention towards it uh, and, and, and dealing with it is what is going to make you uh, succeed in this. And um, one of the um, 
it's it, it's it it is literally everything and i i know i'm repeating myself but it's like i just can't say it enough um and uh, when it comes down to your layering system and your base layer um you know the two the two main options that you have available for you are merino wool uh or well or some kind of wool and then um and then polyester. I, I lost a little bit of my train of thought there uh, two seconds ago, but but I, I want to finish my first point. The, the, main, the main point of a base layer is to wick the sweat off of your body, not to give you warmth. So usually the number one problem that people do with their, with their, with their, uh, with their base layer is that they buy too thick of a base layer depending on who you are, okay? And that's the part where it's a lot of trial and error. Some people run hotter than others. I run extremely hot. So my base layer needs to be thin. How thin? You know, there's weight to all of this. But for me, if I can, like, put it towards a light and I can see the light coming through it, to me, that's the, the thickness that I need. If I can't see the light getting through it, it's way too too thick and way too warm. It's I'm, I'm going to get super soaked. Because in the wintertime, like I was saying, it's impressive how much you can sweat. But there's another component to that makes you very wet in the winter time is that as your body generates a ton of heat when you're out putting like hiking backpacking cutting wood whatever you're doing high climbing and your body's generating a ton of heat that warm air okay that heat that your body's generating well first you'll sweat a little bit because of that that's normal that's your body's way of cooling itself down but second is when that warm air that bubble of warm air around you gets created and it, it and then it hits it, that warmth travels through your layers and then it hits the cold air outside. What do we know from, you know, I don't know, science, high school science, when a hot hair, a hot air hits a cold air is that it condensate. So, so a big factor or a big, a big factor of you being wet in the wintertime and moisture management is the fact that there's going to be a lot of condensation that's, that's going to happen along the way. But your body heat... Okay, the heat that your body generates through a proper layering system allows for the moisture to travel from one layer to the other through because of your body heat and for it to evaporate and actually dry your stuff out if you time the amount of output that you need to put out based on how long you have left before you go to camp or how long you have left before you have to stop moving around around camp. If you're cutting wood, you know you have about an hour left of cutting wood then slowing down enough so that you're still warm okay not cold so you're still moving you're warm but you're not overly warm where you're creating a lot of condensation and sweat allows for your body heat to to essentially dry out your clothes uh, especially if you don't wear a shell uh, on the outside and that's a whole other conversation uh, the shell but to come back to the main premise around why i think that um, merino wool is very is not well understood is that you had to understand everything I just said there okay and let's just actually let's just for the fun of it I've got my computer here uh, in front of me let's go on Google here and ask um, uh, what are the pros to uh, merino wool to merino wool benefits to merino wool let's see what, what comes up because there's a reason why it's such a, a fad. Like the last four to five years, you really like it's like everywhere. That's the thing that everybody wants, uh, and um, um, and uh, it's just it's just interesting to me because I think uh, those reasons may not always apply to the um, the actual outdoors men <laughs> or woman that go out. So um, you know, uh, some of the stuff I read here, it provides good insulation transport moisture and and has anti static properties so that's important anti static properties um that's interesting but definitely transport moistures right so that's a, one of the key component to be able to dry yourself out out there uh anti static properties i'm not exactly sure how that's uh useful uh it doesn't itch or uh like um like um uh, like wool itself, because a lot of some people just wool, it makes it really itchy. So merino wool doesn't have that um, smell uh, or it doesn't smell as much. So that's another thing that, you know, merino wool is is really like highly re reputable for is that 
if you've ever worn a synthetic excuse me, if you've ever worn a synthetic um, blend base layer, you know that if you've spent four days in it or three days in it from a winter backpacking trip, it, it is quite stinky at the end. Uh, I do believe that the, sell, the selling point of the smell from Merino wool, wool is a little overplayed because trust me, if you go out on a three-day you know, winter backpacking trip with your mer merino wool base layer, you're not going on a date on the fourth day. It still smells pretty bad as well. It just, it it certainly smells less. And that can be um, something interesting depending on, you know, body order of different people. But it's not like, it's not going to smell. It's not that perfect. <laughs> uh, it's lightweight. Um, it keeps its shape. Uh, so, you know, like there's really good, you know, it's natural. It's a, it's a natural material. So, you know, there, the, the pollution aspect of it or the carbon footprint is, you know, there's essentially none because these these uh, sheep just keep, their, their hair just keep um, keeps growing all the time. Um, you know, let's see if I can find other ones here. Cause so far, like you would, if you're researching Marina wool and you see this, you're like, yeah, man, this, this, this is awesome. This is everything I wanted. Right. Uh, it's natural and sustainable. It's soft. Like I said, doesn't itch. Uh, it helps with temperature regulating. I'm not super familiar with it, but I believe where the, the, the sheep or the, uh, whatever. Yeah. I guess it, they're from sheep. Um, the, the animals that, that, uh, they're harvesting it from, um, is in New Zealand, and the, the my understanding is that the way the way they adapted over the years, I could be very wrong, by the way, on that story. But I, I my recollection is the way they adapted over the years, they had to be able to have a, a wool uh, or a layer on on them that would be able to cool them down when it would be super hot, but to retain heat when it would be super super cold. So uh, super cold. So um, you know that does have that in the fiber of that material. That's that's actually pretty impressive. Uh, Keeps you dry and sweat free. Like I said, it it a lot. It helps the moisture uh, to travel. It's odor resistant. Yeah, better, but you know, <laughs> um, fire resistant. You know, so when you when you think of that, it's like when you read all of these. Like I said, it's fantastic. It it just seems like the right thing. Uh, but you know, there's there's a couple of things to me that comes to mind because, like I said, like uh, I think that. A lot of the folks that sell merino wool base layer um, or whoever, like I said, made a marketing plan around it, um, did a really good job because there are some things that merino wool is uh, makes the challenge of winter backpacking even more challenging. And, and I want to address this because you might be one of those person that have, you know, the very because one of the big downside to, to, to merino wool um, and, and to everybody, like on all of my polls, the vast majority of people said to me that Marina wool was the choice of the base layer, which was interesting, right? On, on, on YouTube, I had 239 votes, 72% were Marina wool, 28% were synthetic on Instagram. I think I had like 98% of the people that answered and that was close to a hundred that was Marina wool, you know, and everybody's really into it. But for the people that, that one of the major point that people have commented about the synthetic, uh, the reason why they go for synthetic polyester blends is because honestly, merino wool is kind of unaffordable. To be honest, it's very expensive, um, and um, and I'm here today to challenge the fact that maybe uh, not only it is way more expensive, but I don't necessarily think that if it's the right solution for you. And uh, I'm going to jump into this right now. Um, the reason why. I think that merino wool is way oversold for the high output activity kind of person or timing. Meaning, if you go winter backpacking, you have a layering system during the day that you're going to be wearing when you go in a winter time where you're going to snowshoe for like sun up to sundown, set up camp, and then you're going to get to once camp is set up, then you're going to change into your night clothes uh, sort of deal. So you have a whole different kind of layering system. Those two layering systems, although very similar and work the same way, uh, I have two very different ones. And, and the difference between the two of those is the material that I use. If I'm going to be out in the wintertime cutting wood all day long, uh, same thing. Like I, I've got a high output activity. I'm going to be hot. I'm going to be sweating. Um, I, I want to wear a different version of my layering system so that it serves that purpose better. Um, and, and that's where synthetic blend to me not to me, synthetic blend, synthetic blend, period, the polyester blend 
base layers and even mid layer in insulation far outperforms merino wool like far outperforms merino wool sure a little colder but like i said if you're using a base layer to keep you warm you're doing it wrong like you're you're literally doing it wrong your base layer is, is designed to wake the sweat off of your skin to initiate the moisture traveling through the the the, the, the layering system number one um so so uh, um what was I going to say? <laughs> I just lost my train of thought. Uh, but yes, if you're using your... So the merino wool is a little warmer, uh, but the the biggest, and and that's where it, it all kind of comes together and why uh, I think synthetic blend for me, not for me, why synthetic blend is a much be better material when you're on your outputs is the fact that synthetic blend material retains way less more moisture. The fibers re retain way less moisture than merino wool and if you don't believe me on that you know you can run that experience yourself at home take your base layer made out of polyester take your base layer made out of wool take a wool sweater take a take a polyester uh blend fleece polar jacket put them all in the washing machine and then by the end of the cycle of the washing machine when you take them out um when you take them out you're gonna see that your polyester blend uh, your polyester blend um, uh, insulation is almost dry right out of the washer. It was literally after the spin cycle, it's almost dry compared to your wool. And that difference in how much moisture uh, uh, absorption that these two materials do, it is so key. It is so key to the success of your winter outings, especially if you're going to go for overnight trips. Because if you're going to be wet, like, right, we've established that you're going to get wet. You're going to sweat. There's going to be condensation. Your body will create moisture around you. You're going to be wet. And if we know this and we know that the, key, the goal throughout the day, as I tried to explain a little bit earlier, is to transfer the moisture from one layer to another so that over time during your day, as you time how much output that you put out, how how much heat that your body will generate and that's going to be you know when you're in the middle of the day and you're just pushing hard i don't overly think about it but when i know I'm, I'm about an hour away from camp i start slowing down and on purpose because i want my body temperature to to stay nice and warm because i'm still moving but i don't want to be creating an excess amount of heat so that i can slowly start to dry off and believe me or like for the folks at home like you may not believe it, but like you can dry yourself at minus 30 out there if you do it properly. And one of the big ways to do that is to use the proper material because drying out merino wool with your body heat is far, far harder than to do it with a synthetic blend. I can go on a three-day backpacking trip without ever changing my, my layering system now because, first of all, I use a synthetic blend and I use fleece polar jackets as my mid-layers. And, and I just time my output as to when I need to put it out or, or not and then slowly kind of like use my body heat to evaporate and, and push the moisture out. And I don't put my shell over top because when you wear your big Gore-Tex shell and it's not, you know, uh, often enough, what ends not often enough, what ends up happening is that that condensation really happens in between the uh, the the shell and your in mid layer because really they don't breathe. They tell you that they breathe, but they really don't breathe enough to 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 allow for that kind of moisture to 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 leave and now you're creating a microclimate because your body's heat keeps hitting the cold air that's underneath the that's below a Gore-Tex layer for example that can't evaporate so all that moisture keeps getting there and it freezes and then it'll and then it'll get wet again because it'll thaw again when you when your body output so if you remove the outer layer and you use your body heat to slowly push that moisture out Within an hour, an hour and a half of being out there thoughtfully, you can be fully dry. And it is possible also with merino wool. Don't get me wrong. Like, it's not like it's impossible, but it's far easier with synthetic blends. Like, far easier with synthetic blends. And um, I can't recommend it enough. I think, you know, merino wool is a great product, but I think it was great product for the people that work outside in, in environments that they, they go home at night. Uh, or that they go inside at lunch or they whatever it is, because honestly, for multi-day backpacking trips in a, or multi-day winter camping trips, 
man, the synthetic blends outperforms Merino every time. But here's the deal, though. For me, at night, so all of my stuff gets dry right during the day. If I, if uh, my if my synthetic blend is a little is a little wet still, uh, a little humid maybe, maybe I'll put it in my sleeping bag and I'll sleep with it and that'll dry it out. My body heat will dry it out in the night. It's a fantastic way to dry your stuff. Uh, the best way to do that is if you have a liner inside your sleeping bag and you put your uh, your your moist or your 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 wet clothes between underneath you, but in between. Uh, underneath essentially uh, underneath you but you are in the um in the liner of your sleeping bag so that you don't feel that moisture on your on your skin on your body and then just just your body heat will dry all that out it's a great great way so but anyways i take all of the polyester blends uh, off at the end of the night when i know i'm not moving and that's when i start using the natural material i mean i've got my merino wool base layer i've got some nice down feather insulation uh, i've got down feather pants i've got down booties i mean i'm all for natural material by the time when i stop moving because all of these material and, and i mean down is far worse than merino and 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 the thing to it down is that when it gets wet it loses its thermal property and like merino wool um or the synthetic blends uh like like polyester but but you know like all of the the reality is that the 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 natural fibers just retain an enormous amount of of moisture and since the game is moisture management i always always choose a material uh during my my big output that will just retain less moisture because i it's way easier to manage so hopefully that made a little sense i want to give you guys also a little tip uh that's going to be super useful and practical for next time and you can try this out when you go on your first day trip like first no sh snowshoeing day trip or cross-country ski day trip and um you wear you know your base layer like a synthetic blend layer even your merino wool if you choose to still go with them <laughs> but if you wear your base layer and maybe a little bit of a, a mid layer you go out for snowshoeing and you you know you get working and then you get really hot and sweaty and all that and then at the end Maybe when you get back to the car or maybe at the end you want to stop for an hour to, to have lunch and whatnot. If you are in a situation where you have to stop hard cold from, from, from being a full out output and you're fully wet and you didn't have time to calm down and regulate your body heat and the moisture on your body and all that, the best way to deal with that is take an outer insulation layer, okay? Ideally not down because the moisture will travel in the down. The down will be less efficient and then it'll be wet forever until you come home and you can dry it. But if you have like a, a an over-the-top like a wool sweater or a, an over-the-top like a fleece polar jacket, uh, yeah, fleece polar jacket, zip up hoodie or whatever it is. Take that. Not a not a hard shell though. The hard shell it, it won't work. But you're fully wet, right? So your base layer, maybe your quarter zip, you're fully wet because of the output. Take your dry uh, insulation layer, put it over top of it, and now you got to trust the process. You put it over top of it, and then now you're warm because you've got insulation on you, and trust the process of how the moisture will travel from one layer to another, within an hour, you would be stunned at how much you can actually dry uh, your your under layers that you were wearing. And especially, like I said, if you wear synthetic blend, polyester, um, 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 base layers and mid layers, it's pretty impressive how all of this works. And uh, it's the key. It's the only way you can manage to survive day in, day out in the wintertime. And that's how you get to enjoy the winter to its fullest is when you know how to play within uh, the challenging moments of it and you can actually um, have fun with it. So hopefully you guys found uh, value in today's episode. Leave me your comments below. If you're on YouTube, leave me uh, you know a, a review on on the Spotify or Apple Podcasts, wherever you do that. Connect with me over on the, you know, on Instagram, Facebook. Send me your questions. Like I said, I really want to answer some of your questions to really make it valuable for you. Join the Discord as well. There's a big list of things you need to do. <laughs> Essentially, uh, whatever you, uh, however you can get in touch with me, please do, because um, it's always a pleasure to do that. Otherwise, everybody, have a great evening. Well, for me, it's uh, going to be bedtime now. But uh, have a great uh, rest of the day, and uh, I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.